Welcome back to Project Redline. So far we've received great feedback, so keep showing your interest by liking, sharing and commenting on these videos. Okay, so now it's time to mount the engine in the car. Time to crack out the welder. I might even let Luke touch this. Yeah, good luck with that. Probably not, but. All right, so we went back to high school learning about maths and science and plenty of people hated that crap and didn't pay any attention. Well, some did, and I'm gonna put that mumbo jumbo to work right now. We're gonna measure the engine center line, the crankshaft center line, the differential center line, heights and uh, distances from the ground, and we're gonna mount this engine exactly where it should be. So time to crack out the tape measure and get measuring. We've taken some measurements all around the car as a guide to where the engine has to sit before we're touching anything. Diff height from the floor, front cross member height, diff center line to name a few. So what we want to do now before we mount the engine in the car is we have to work out what angles we're going to be working with. So we were to draw a center line between uh, the middle of the crankshaft and the middle of the pinion on the diff. Uh, we want both of those lines to, in to run parallel. Diff's in the car already, so we've measured that, and that angle come up to 0.5 degree positive. So that means to make that line run parallel, we need to make the engine sit on an angle of 0.5 negative. With those done, it's time to get into the fun stuff and lower the engine in place so we can get an idea of what we're working with. So pretty big milestone for the car here. We have the engine mounted. We've suspended the engine and gearbox mock-up in the car with this bar and chain to give us an idea of what we have in front of us. So the most common way normally to mount a rotary engine in the car is often using front plate like this, which has mounting holes. And when that plate's there, Make a cross member off the front here. Cross member mounts to the engine, and then another cross member at the rear where the gearbox is. And there you get two points for mounting, uh, mounting the engine in the car. Now this is an engine from a uh, later model RX7. So that front cross member setup was how all basically pre Series 3 RX7 rotaries were mounted in the car. So they were mounted off the front timing cover and at the rear of the gearbox. Uh, from like the FC Series 4 onwards, uh, they were all mounted basically off the side in, the, in this centre plate here um, with, with a mount on the centre cross member either side. So those are the two methods that are pretty much commonly used all the time. We're not actually going to use any of those methods. So as this is set up for drag racing, we want the engine to be as rigid as possible. It's actually going to be solid mounted, so don't have to worry about large bulky engine mounts and stuff like that. It's just going to be solid mounted direct to the cross member. What we're going to do is run, uh, make a 12 mil aluminium, have a 12 mil aluminium plate that will basically also be double as the sump for the engine. Um, it'll help tie the engine together um, really effectively as well um, because it is it's so thick and so rigid. But what we'll do is we'll have some wings off the sump that come out here and um, pick up off this mounting point that's already on there. You can see this mount here is, is on an angle, so what we'll do is we'll, we'll cut this out and we'll, we'll make it sit horizontal like the other mount does. The other one will be just like traditional at the back of the, at back of the gearbox and, and we can make that later. We know where we want it to sit and we know how we want to mount it, so all that's left is to get fabricating. We use an old FC RX7 sump as a template on which to cut around with some additional area left as wings for the engine mounts. You always think that aluminium's uh, super light and um, you know it's very flexible, but when it's in thickness of this, like a 12 mil, it's um, you're not bending that in a hurry, that's for sure. What we're gonna do is, this is 500 wide. We're gonna cut a piece 400 uh, long. Pretty much this is the current sump on the car. Um, you know, we'll go something like, we'll pretty much end up cutting probably trimming this to here and um, it'll probably have something like a, a winged area I'd say like something like that on both sides and this is where the engine will mount at these two points here 
due to the thickness of the plate and the way that it mounts all the way around and ties in every single every single plate and housing um, together uh, it also adds just to strengthen the engine that little bit as well so uh, serving two purposes basically A spray can or engineer's paint gives us a solid mark as to where to cut and where to drill holes for the sump as well. Imagine the sump that we're basically going to fabricate over the top of it. Then um, this is pretty much what it what it will look like. We'll trim these bits off and mirror this out here. There'll be a hole here for a bolt and another one out here. Next job is we're going to drill out these holes now for the the sump plate. This is what's known as a milling machine. It's basically like a big drill press but the table can move. So instead of just having a fixed table, this table can actually move. So the mill head stays centered and you move the workpiece around by, by moving the table around. You can use a normal drill chuck in the mill the, with the three heads. Um, we generally don't use the drill head that often. We normally will use what's called uh, a collet here, which can also hold the drill bit. Um, the collet has many sides to what you'll see here that all clamp at the same rate onto this, in this case, the drill bit here. Whereas the drill chuck will only have three sides clamping um, and they're also independently tightened by the springs here. So you can get slight variation or you could get, you know, the, the slightest bit of um, wobble in that drill bit. So when we're precision drilling, uh, milling out items, um, we always prefer to use the, the collet. We also have large drill bits such as these, uh, this is a, what's known as MT2, Morse Taper 2, and they just basically fit directly straight in, into, into the taper up here. All right, so we'll do this along all the axis, get all these uh, holes drilled out. Yeah, then we can mount, pull the engine out of the car, work on that cross member, then we'll mount this back, uh, we mount this on the engine and uh, put it in the car, work out exactly where everything needs to go, drill out the, the other holes for the engine mounting and um, get the engine in the car. If you can imagine this is the bottom of the engine, something like that. So the engine will mount off these wings um, a sump will be made underneath and we'll obviously cut out sections of this for the oil to drain through and the oil pickup and stuff. Um, but yeah, you can probably get a good idea now of uh, how we're gonna mount the engine in the car. So next up we have to modify this mount. We'll have to cut it uh, and we'll, we'll basically make sit, sit horizontal and parallel with the other mount. Uh, we'll probably section out a fair bit of this area too, just for more clearance of the sump and we'll weld in it another section here. We'll, we'll re-strengthen that cross member up anyway. The, the bottom plate that that will you know, bolt to the engine then bolt to the cross member uh, will basically sit there. There'll be probably some kind of poly bushing just underneath it just to space it up and just to take a little bit of the vibration out of the uh, engine through the drivetrain and through the chassis. But yeah, all we have to do now is um, weld in the plate there, the engine mount. Yeah, center it all up and, and that'll be basically it. Then we can put the engine back in the car, mount it all up and um, start fabricating all the cool stuff like turbo exhaust manifolds, inlet manifolds and putting a radiator intercooler and all that kind of stuff in. Okay, so we've mirrored that engine mount. Now it's just a case of uh, welding this one in place. Once this is in place and you know at the end of the end of everything, once it's all mounted up, 
this whole cross member will actually come out of the car. We'll repair it, modify it, and um, fully strengthen it up, abrasive it in it. So how it looks now is, is definitely just temporary. First of all, we'll actually bolt the engine on, drop the engine back in there, really get it centered exactly where it has to be with, so the drivetrain and the center of the crank line is exactly spot on. So the crossman is out of the car. Uh, it's out of the car for pretty obvious reasons. Um, we want to, obviously, what we did was cut and shut the engine mount, mounts in so we could um, properly make the sump and things at first. Uh, we've cut the, the top out of it here, uh, and obviously we've cut the hell out of it here uh, for the original engine mount. So we'll try and cut some of this off, weld in a, a single flat plate across here. Um, we'll weld in some of this really thick wall um, RHS into here just to strengthen uh, it all up and um, even though the plate's pretty strong we'll just give it some lateral rigidity. Cut off here, we boxed in there, welded on the sides and on the front you can see. Uh, so that's all in there, we don't need to weld in all here. Uh, we cut out this ugly section here and we've boxed that in as well, all TIG welded in. Uh, next what we'll do is we'll um, clean it all up. This is pretty much the end result. Uh, it's a very tough, uh, hard coating. Um, here it's in a, a gloss sort of black. Um, yeah, which helped protect it from from rust and also make it really, really easy to, um, to clean up too. With the sump done and the cross member all finished, it's time to focus on our engine mounts. And they don't get any more basic than these. We've used some steel tube as an outer, a poly bush as the inner, and a steel pipe as the centre to create some tiny cute engine mounts, which will help take some of the harshness out of solid mounting this engine. Okay, so it's in, finally, uh, engine plate's done. Engine is mounted. Uh, we haven't made the gearbox cross member yet because this isn't the gearbox we will be using, but uh, the alignment is fine to, to dummy it all up. So what we want to do now is before we get making all our manifolds and everything, we want to bolt everything onto the engine that we need to make around. So things like the intake manifold, uh, water pump assembly and things like that, um, just so we know yeah, what sort of room we've got to work in. While it's a really relatively fairly large engine bay. We still have to fit in large frame turbocharger, radiator, intercooler, oil cooler, exhaust manifold, exhaust, uh, intake manifold. We're gonna be making a fuel cell, which will also sit in the engine bay on that side. So there is quite a lot of hardware that still has to bolt in here. And you can already see that due to the size of the steering box, um, once we have an exhaust manifold come out of here, we are gonna be somewhat restricted in where we can mount the exhaust and, and how we mount the turbocharger. So that's probably mounting the, the radiator intercooler and all cooler first, just so we've got all those dimensions of where everything's gonna sit and, and stay. Making the exhaust manifold and, and working out exactly where the turbocharger is going to mount is probably the the first major, major step we're gonna take here. I mean, the, the piping will be two inch diameter, so it, it is fairly large piping um, for, the, for the exhaust manifold. Uh, it will come out here probably at a, a tightish 90 uh, and then we'll have another one here as well so you know it's going to take a fair bit of room here so uh, we can look at maybe mounting the tur turbocharger facing this way and running the exhaust out through through the inner guard um, that's that's one idea the other idea is maybe facing the turbocharger this way and then having the exhaust hopefully run down Hopefully there's enough room here once the exhaust manifold's bolted in and run it out through here and then alongside the tunnel because obviously the tunnel has had some extensive work done to it to fit the, the last, last engine that was in the car. We'll mount the radiator, mount the intercooler, mount the oil cooler and then, um, then we'll take it from there. So this is what we pretty much have ended up with in terms of design. Um, you can see here, still got to weld a lot of it. I'll have to obviously section out parts for um, the pickup and 
and a couple of drain points and, and things and return points of oil from like the turbo drain rig um, obviously the fill point things like that um, dipstick but uh, this is this is the basis of it so we've got a 12 mil plate some six mil plate here and we've got um, two and a half three mil plate here um, and yeah these are all the steps in uh, in the sump basically and uh, now what we'll need to do uh, first is <coughs> we'll weld up all the way around the inside of the sump uh, we'll weld sections of the outside here uh, and then uh, I'll put it on the mill and I'll machine all here so it's all dead flat uh, I'll machine the underside of this around too so we know when we need to seal it up against the uh, the engine uh, there won't be any leaks and then we'll get to working uh, welding the rest of the uh, the bottom half of the sump on. Uh, we can start cutting at some of the points where we obviously need to uh, get the oil to and from the sump. Uh, one of the main points is this is the fill point at the back and also a point for the dipstick. Uh, you can probably see the large the hole here. Uh, so all the oil when uh, it comes through the filler tube and the dipstick comes down through here. Um, and we've also got the most important part which is uh, the pickup. Now this is the um, standard pickup that come off the um, Series 4 turbo engine. This is one off a, an earlier model car. Um, and I think that may work. If not, we'll just, we'll just modify that. All right, the engine's in. It's time to start bolting on all the other stuff. The intercooler's at the front, so that's the first thing we're gonna do. So the first thing we're gonna mount will be this ProFlow intercooler. It's the Delta Fin style design. It is, it measures up here 400 by 400 in the core. Pretty sure there's a three inch, yeah. It's a three inch inlet and outlets. It's got bungs top and bottom. Uh, overall width is just shy of 600. So you see inside the core, you can see a lot of these fins also, which is what basically helps uh, dissipate the heat um, through this core. So you'll have air moving through the core and these fins contact the actual, uh, the actual core here and draw heat out through air moving through. But also with that uh, slight restriction of the air, hitting those fins on the inside, that's what helps dissipate the heat to the outside of the, the core of these of these tubes. First thing we're gonna do is, is basically mount this in the car. Once this is in, we can then mount the radiator. Once the radiator's in, we can then uh, mount the turbo because we'll know um, where basically what, what sort of room we've got to play with. Okay, so roughly there is where we want it to sit. I mean, we could drop it down a little bit and you can recess it. You know, there's a lot of space in, in the front of the grill here. What we want to be mindful of here is not, we don't want anything too low. I mean, if this car does happen to do it, uh, a bit of an aggressive wheel sound and hits the front springs very hard, um, obviously whatever's the lowest point of the car here is going to take the full the full brunt of it. So you can see here uh, we've got low points of the chassis, the cross member and that too. So keeping the intercool and the radiator above those points, uh, I mean they they won't contact contact the ground. So. Uh, that's pretty perfect there. Um, you know the the levels of um, how high they sit and things like that. We can we can get that right uh, later, but um, that's that's pretty pretty spot on there. So this is the radiator that come with the car. It really did sit a bit low for my liking, um, and it was a bit a bit wide also. I did quickly pressure test it just by uh, pumping pressure in with a with a pressure testing radio pressure testing kit and uh, spraying a bit of. A soapy water around it and uh, it, it didn't seem to hold pressure at all anyway so I'm pretty sure this is this is dead more than likely we'll make another trip down to uh, to get a ProFlow radiator from the guys at VPW uh, we've got we've got one of those ProFlow radiators in our in our RX-7 race car and we've used those countless times in in other people's race cars customers cars have sold heaps over the years temporarily to mock it up um, this cardboard box that, that the intercooler will come in a little bit bigger than the than the um, than the radiator will be. It's for mock-up purposes only, so we can use it pretty pretty effectively to get the uh, dimensions that we want. All right, so I'll just sort of push this into position. It's a bit tight on, on this corner here anyway, so we'll just get it so it sits about there, which will be pretty much spot on. So I'll just tape that down so it holds itself in place. This is the modified side. And this is the standard side stool, so we've cut that section off, sanded off all the, all the weld there, 
sectioned off down the bottom here and clearance this little bit here. Uh, now we just have to repeat the same thing over this side and also uh, cut off this barb. So uh, we'll do that and we'll put it back in the car, measure everything up, uh, clean up all the, all the, all the, uh, the cutting and stuff later. But uh, I'm just worried about getting the rough cuts done first and making sure it's all, all right and, and mounts in the car properly. So here we are over at the intercooler again. We've got these little mounts that we've made up out of round tube and some uh, flat washers. These are the bolts we, we just cut down. You can see after cleaning up that thread, these install no problems at all. All right, so here they are, the finished mounts. Pretty serious bit of hardware, but um, you know, it's got a Got to hold on to that intercooler while it's running down the quarter mile. Uh, we'll do something similar to this uh, also on the bottom. So it's it's held in by, by four points, so top and bottom. We'll uh, mount the radiator to the intercooler and then we'll tie both of those pieces in together underneath as well. Okay, so it's all starting to take shape now. The engine's in, radiator's in, intercooler's in, and now we know exactly how much space we've got to play with. So it's time to move on to the next part. On the next episode, we're going to concentrate on boost. So we're going to head down to MTQ to pick out a turbo and talk to the guys from TurboSmart on what they recommend for this project. Okay, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell so you receive notifications as soon as the next video instalment comes out. Give us some feedback, write in the comments and let us know what you think.